Analyzing business transactions and knowing how they impact the accounting equation is the first step in recording the transaction and updating those accounts. But we don't record transactions by using increases and decreases. We use something called debits and credits. What do these foreign words mean? Debits and credits are how we translate increases and decreases in accounts. They also help us to always keep the accounting equation in balance. All the debits in each transaction must equal all the credits. Yeah, yeah, but what is a debit and a credit? That's a bit harder to explain. You see, debits and credits do different things to different accounts. Debits are not increases and credits decreases, for example. That would be easier and simpler, but that's not how it works. Debits increase some accounts and decrease others. Likewise, credits increase some accounts and decrease others. The best definition you can have of a debit is left, and the best definition you can have of a credit is right. Debits are always on the left side, and credits are always on the right side. So how do we know what accounts are increased by a debit and what accounts are increased by a credit? I'm glad you asked. We have what is known as the rules of debits and credits. These rules tell us which accounts are increased by a debit and which accounts are increased by a credit. Let's list out all the categories of accounts we have and then find out what increases each account, a debit or a credit. Also, whatever doesn't increase the account must decrease it. Assets are increased by a debit which also means they're decreased by a credit. Liabilities are increased by a credit. Stock is increased by a credit. Retained earnings is increased by a credit. Dividends are increased by a debit. Revenues are increased by a credit. Expenses are increased by a debit. Accounts also have normal balances. This is what we expect the account to have as a balance in terms of a debit or credit. For example, we expect the cash account to have a debit balance. This is what we refer to as its normal balance. We can easily know what the normal balance of an account should be by using the debit credit rules. Whatever increases an account is the normal balance. Let's try an example. Assume your company purchased $4,000 of inventory on account. On account is just a business way of saying you haven't paid for it yet and you owe your supplier that money. Analyze the transaction. You purchased inventory, so an asset is involved and it's increasing. Specifically, inventory is increasing and by $4,000. You haven't paid for it yet. Therefore, you owe someone money. So, a liability is increasing. Specifically, we would use an account called Accounts Payable. This is increasing by $4,000. We've addressed everything that's happened with this transaction. Assets have increased by $4,000. Liabilities have increased by $4,000. The accounting equation is in balance. We can now turn this into debits and credits instead of increases and decreases. If an asset is increasing, the rules of debits and credits say that this should be debited. If a liability is increasing, the rules of debits and credits say that this should be credited. So we would debit inventory for that $4,000. And we would credit accounts payable for that $4,000. All of the debits equal all of the credits. You did it! You used debits and credits! That wasn't so bad, was it?
It is a rare instance that you will hear the words memorize in accounting. It is important to know why we do things in accounting, and then you can apply that knowledge to any situation. However, debit and credit rules and normal balances are just something to memorize and know. Failure to do so will be at your own peril. You have been warned.